uh, Senator Sinema is uh, recognized uh, for her questions. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my first question is for Chief Conti. What coordinating actions were taken in the weeks leading up to January 6th to share intel across federal and local law enforcement? And what security planning took place and with which agencies? Thank you for that question. So there were a, a series of several meetings uh, that took place uh, leading up uh, to the events of January the 6th. There were the weekly uh, law enforcement uh, partners calls uh, that take place where our federal partners are part of that. Uh, there's the First Amendment uh, coordinating calls that took place, uh, at least two of those, uh, prior to this event. There's a National uh, Park Service uh, permit call that also took place uh, prior to this event, and as Chief Sun uh, mentioned, uh, several uh, calls involving several of the law enforcement uh, ent entities uh, leading up to uh, the events of January uh, the 6th. Uh, so there are a significant amount of, of phone calls or virtual uh, meetings uh, that took place uh, leading up to January the 6th. Uh, thank you. And could you talk a little bit about what you see as the mistakes that were made or the holes um, that didn't help connect all those dots in those meetings and coordinating prior to January 6? So I, I think the, the major uh, issue, at least from my uh, perspective, uh, I think that uh, in terms of the, the, the uh, sharing of information, how it's shared, I think that that, uh, that is where the focus uh, should be. Again, we're, we're talking about uh, a report that came from the Norfolk office uh, on the day before, the night, that night, it's around after 7 o'clock p.m., uh, that was sent to email boxes. You know, as the chief of police for the Metropolitan Police Department, I assure you that my phone is on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and I'm available for any phone call uh, from any agency that has information with respect to something of this magnitude uh, happening in our city. Uh, certainly, if there was uh, information about uh, one of our police stations being overrun or a federal building uh, being overrun that was related to the Metropolitan Police Department, I assure you that I would be on the phone directly with the uh, uh, officials that are responsible for the law enforcement response uh, to give them that information firsthand. I'm not really relying on technology in the form of an email in hopes that that information makes it to where it needs to uh, where it needs to be. So I think that that's critical. Uh, to uh, Chief Sun's point, uh, there were several phone calls leading up to this, and no specific information that talked about uh, the events that we saw and experienced on January the sixth. And I really do believe uh, that there should be uh, quite a bit of attention given to that. I appreciate that. My next question is for Mr. Sund. So you outlined that the FBI report was sent via email to the Capitol Police the evening of January 5th and that you never received the report. Um, is there an understanding within the system of how that report did not make it to you or to uh, other individuals in leadership in the Capitol Police the night of January the 5th? I appreciate that question, ma'am. Uh, actually, as I mentioned earlier in the uh, discussion, this is a report that I am just learning about within the last, you know, they informed me yesterday uh, of the report. So I'm not sure of what uh, investigation may be going on. Uh, I've since, since uh, January 8th, uh, have left the department. Uh, what investigations, I'm sh I know the chief has put uh, additional safe ma safeguards in place to make sure something like that doesn't happen again, but I'm not sure of what the outcome of was, why that didn't get pushed up farther. Was there an expectation or a process or procedure prior to January 6th that should have gotten that memo up to your attention the night of January 5th? There's a, there's a process that ensures that information uh, from the Joint Terrorism Task Force and through our task force officers gets over to our intelligence division and would be moved up to our um, intelligence analyst and the director of that intelligence division. And then based on uh, that information, uh, it, he could push it then up to the assistant chief or directly to me. He has my cell phone number. Uh, we talk regularly. And so, to you, as you mentioned, you were just learning about this recently, but would it have been an expectation that the FBI would have called Capitol Police or someone on the Joint Task Force to alert the new intelligence in an, in an expedited fashion, knowing that this information 
made it to the Capitol Police Intel team on the 5th, I, what I'm trying to understand is how it did not get to the higher levels to make preparations the night of the 5th. Right. Let me, I'll just uh, go ahead and echo what Chief Conti had mentioned that I do think that deserves additional focus. I think if we have information that's coming in the day before a major event uh, that, that has that level of specificity, that it could get a little more attention than, you know, just being handled either through an email or electronic uh, uh, format. Mm -hmm. Was there any intelligence that you did receive in the several days leading up to January 6th that caused you to change any of the security plans amongst the United States Capitol Police? So, yeah, just to, just to reiterate, you know, all the intelligence and all the information that we've been receiving during the development of this, um, the event for the 6th, outlined very similar to what the intelligence report that we that was published on the 3rd uh, outlined. We were expecting large number of protesters coming in. We expected a potentially uh, violent uh, group. We knew they were being focused on the Capitol, and we knew that some of them had a, uh, uh, may be armed. And is that is what was really driving up until even, you know, regardless of what was put out the 3rd, this was information that we, we knew. We were developing our security plan uh, around that. And, and that's when we looked at, you know, we had, uh, based on our review of the November and December um, mega events, determined we were going to adjust our fence line and push our fence line out. And when we wanted to do that, that's when I'd request the National Guard knowing we're going to need support for the fence line. Mm, thank you. You know, Chief Conti, you stated that the intelligence that you had received on January 6th didn't differ from the previous MAGA marches, the two previous. Was there any conversation or consideration about the fact that the January 6th was scheduled on a very important day that Congress would be in session certifying the results of the election? And was that different in a consideration around security um, than the other two marches which had been on weekends without Congress being in session? Absolutely, and that's reflected in the response posture for the Metropolitan Police Department. Uh, for the two prior uh, demonstrations that happened, uh, the MAGA 1 and 2 uh, marches, the Metropolitan Police Department, uh, we did not call up uh, officers from surrounding jurisdictions to be stationed physically within the footprint of the District of Columbia. We, we did not do that before. Uh, the mayor, in addition to uh, calling up those additional resources, again, called up the National Guard specifically uh, for the reasons that we outlined to them, uh, so to, which would allow the Metropolitan Police Department to be a lot nimble in our response. That, in, in, a, in essence, enabled us to be, to be able to respond quickly to assist the Capitol Police officers. So those response those responses were different. Uh, we were disrupting uh, individuals or intercepting individuals who were armed uh, with firearms in our city in violation of the mayor's order, many of whom that were on, on, on uh, uh, federal, federal grounds. Uh, so the Metropolitan Police Department's uh, posture certainly was escalated beyond what we did the prior two marches. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I appreciate your indulgence. I see I've gone over my time. I have a few extra questions that I'll submit. Thank you. Okay, very good. Thank you, Senator Sinema, and uh, thank you for your emphasis on the uh, FBI report and the issues that I everyone here seems to acknowledge with uh, getting uh, that, that it didn't go at the right place and just putting send uh, isn't enough for a report like that.